Hey everyone, let's talk about this total solar eclipse coming on Monday, April 8th. You need to go see this thing. If you don't, you're going to miss out on the greatest brain warping, mind melting, glitch in the matrix experience you'll ever have, along with one of the most spectacular sights in the natural world. So let's jump right in with donuts. A total eclipse happens when the moon, right here, slides directly in front of the sun, which is actually white, it's not yellow. Uh, blocking its light. The reason this is so special is that the occultation, as I call it, is perfect. In a total solar eclipse, the apparent size of the moon in the sky, that is how big it appears to us on the ground, precisely equals the apparent size of the sun in the sky. The result, if you're standing in the right spot, is 100% coverage of the sun's disk. The moon isn't a little smaller than the sun or a little larger. It's a perfect matching of the two disks the moon in front of the sun. Now this has the effect of making the coronasphere, uh, the sun's atmosphere, the sun's outer atmosphere, which is usually not detectable, come shimmering into view. You can see these tendrils of glowing gas around the moon-sun combo. You can see solar prominences on the sun's surface peeking out from the edge of the moon. And you can even detect mountains on the moon itself. Here on Earth, because you're suddenly standing in the, in the shadow of the moon, the sky darkens, the air cools, and you have a 360 degree sunrise at the horizon all around you. All of this is punctuated by this incredible vision in the center of the sky above you. Now, the reason this all occurs is actually somewhat miraculous. It happens because uh, the sun is exactly 400 times larger than the moon, and at that moment, it's exactly 400 times farther away from us. So think about that for just a second. This entire event happens purely because of a geometric coincidence. There's no practical benefit to eclipses, no natural imperative that generates them, and it just happens to have this unintended consequence of a striking visual for us on the ground. It's pure coincidence. It's a literal gift from the cosmos. And all you have to do is be at the right place at the right time. The eclipse on April 8th is going to be a big deal for several reasons. First, the period of totality will be extremely long at up to four minutes, depending on where you are in the shadow's path. Second, it'll rip right through the United States, just as the 2017 eclipse that you might remember did, but in a different direction. This one will stretch from Mexico to Texas and Oklahoma and up to New York and Vermont and then into Canada. But you must be within the borders of that 100 mile wide path in order to see totality. Despite what some people are saying online, 99% totality is not good enough. The sun is so bright that even at that small amount of visibility, it still completely overpowers all the good stuff I was just talking about. And all you have is a partial eclipse that isn't nearly as spectacular. It's a completely different event. Uh, remember as well that in the path, the closer you are to the center of the path of totality, the longer the eclipse will be about a minute out at the edge and up to four minutes in the middle. That's because the shadow is a circle passing over the earth. So of course, at the edges of the path, the circle narrows, hence the briefer period of totality. Um, but you won't see anything if the weather doesn't cooperate. And it's not a foregone conclusion that it will. Spring weather along that path tends to bring a lot of clouds with it and rain, even in Texas. So if you're truly dedicated to the mission, you're gonna wanna be mobile and if you have a car and you're going to want to pay attention to weather forecasts in the week or so before and reposition yourself if needed this may not be possible for a lot of people and traffic is definitely going to be a huge issue especially if weather becomes a factor so hopefully we'll get a break on the big day and have nice clear skies to enjoy this with so let's talk about these things solar eclipse classes they're critical during the partial phases of the eclipse before and after totality when the moon is only partially covering the sun but during totality, you do not need them, and in fact, you won't see anything at all during the one to four minutes of totality if you have these on. So you absolutely want them nowhere near your face during totality. Yeah, you can find these glasses pretty easily online, and you'll find them in a lot of stores along the path. But if you can't find them anywhere, don't worry about it. The main event is totality, and you don't need them for that. Just don't look at the sun until totality starts, and stop looking at it when it ends. You can also take pictures during totality without special filters and look at it with the naked eye or normal binoculars. When it starts getting brighter, just stop looking. That's on you. Use common sense. When it starts getting brighter, don't look at it. So, so why do this at all? Why make the effort? 
It's just a nice light show in the sky. Well, yeah, and there are millions of people who truly couldn't care less, and that's their loss. Others will see this thing happening and become paralyzed, transfixed. It's a completely otherworldly experience, something that simply shouldn't be happening. The sun vanishing before your eyes and the sky going dark in the middle of a sunny day, save for this magical spread of white threads of light surrounding an inky black disk, all happening for no reason at all except to make you happy.